to our 2015 Minnesota Vikings draft recap. I'm Tom Moore from bikefans.com and for the second consecutive season we're thrilled to have Minnesota Vikings general manager Rick Spielman join us to talk about some of the recent roster additions to the team. Rick, welcome back to the long ship at bikefans.com. Well, thanks for having me on. No problem. I got to tell you before we dive into the draft, the big talk off the field in Minnesota this off season has been at the running back position. Now Rick, I know you're probably tired of addressing this, but the fans would be all over me if I didn't ask the obvious question that's on everyone's mind. So here goes. Can you tell us if you expect Jarek McKinnon to fully recover from his lower back injury and what <laughs> role do you see for him in the 2015 offense? <laughs> We're very excited about uh, Mr. McKinnon and how far he's come along. He was a quarterback that we converted to running back last year and it was amazing how quickly he adapted to the position change. And he seemed to get more comfortable each week and the more touches he has. He's a great 1B type back that has some quickness, change of pace, can catch the ball in the backfield. He's not overly big, but he's thick, and it's amazing how quickly he uh, improved in pass protection. And if you're going to be in there on third down, that is one thing that's key. You have to be able to pass protect. So we're very excited. You know, he's been here all off season. He's fully recovered from his back injury, and we're looking for big things from him next year. Now, I don't want you to share any secrets, but given he was a quarterback in college, any chance we ever see him on the field maybe throw that halfback option pass? Uh, not as long as we have number five on the field. I hear you. Well, as we turn to this year's draft, you know, the critics have graded the Viking draft and have largely given you an A or an A- minus for the work you and your team did this year in selecting the 10 new Minnesota Vikings. And I wondered, whether the feedback's good or bad, do you pay any attention to those type of reviews? It's hard, you know. I, you have to wait until these guys get on the field because I've seen a lot, of, a lot of things through 25 years I've been doing this where you get an A right after draft day and then you get a D three years from now. So... You know, we try to get the best players we can get in there. We try to find the players that fit Coach Zimmer's defensive scheme, North Turner's offensive scheme, uh, the criteria and the athletic traits we're looking for at the position. And I have the utmost faith in this coaching staff that, and we saw it last year, is that when we get young guys, how they develop this young talent. And you've seen even, you know, the Xavier Rhodes, the Sharif Floyd, the Anthony Bars, the Teddy Bridgewaters, Harrison Smiths of the world and how quickly they improved even from the beginning of the year to the end of the year and going into our second season within the, using the same schemes and the coaches working with these guys uh, now that we're in our off-season program we're very excited about uh, where this is going I think the other thing that you got to really look at too is last year everything was new for everyone and now we have a group of vets and young players that have been through the system one year that uh, understand what's being asked of them, not only on the field but off the field. And so when this new crop of young rookies and new players come into our system, there will be some guys that have already been through it one year and will help develop those guys along the way as well. No doubt. Well, going into the draft, the consensus view for the Vikings was a need at the corner position opposite of Xavier Rhodes, as well as maybe a middle linebacker who could stay on the field in passing downs. And I'll tell you, Rick, it sure looks like you fill both of those needs with quality players. And I was wondering, can you tell fans what it was about Trey Waynes that made him the number 11 overall selection in the draft this year? You know, he fit everything we were looking for from a physical standpoint on the field and all the traits to play corner in this scheme. Uh, he's a press corner. He has great speed. He has very good length. He can stay on top of the receiver as he gets extended down the field. And I know as we sit there and our scouts and coaches talk and we go through what we're looking for, the one thing I think was the key in Coach Zimmer's defense is that if we can have two shutdown-type corners where they, you can put them on an island, that gives our defense so much more flexibility to do multiple things on how they're going to send pressure, you know, where the blitzes are coming from, what kind of coverages they can disguise. Uh, but the whole key to the success of this defense is having two corners that you can have play out on an island. 
Absolutely. And well, you know, I, I wondered, you know, is that number 11 pick approach, of course, we're used to seeing you the last couple of years, you might trade up, down, get multiple picks, whatever it might be. But what are the types of things that you and your staff experience? I mean, you, you know, you, are you calling other teams? Are they calling you to inquire about acquiring your pick? And do you actually call the player you intend to draft before Commissioner Roger Goodell steps up to the podium to announce the selection? Yeah, we, uh, what we do is when we're in, in doing trades on draft day, a lot of it will happen when we're on the clock. If we're anticipating we may move down or up, George Payton, my assistant general manager, and uh, Rob Brzezinski, who's our vice president of football operations, handle all the phone calls coming in and out. And so I'll give them direction, hey, start calling the teams below us in case we want to move down. Or, hey, let's see if we can move up here. So they'll work the phones uh, before we get on the clock. Uh, and then once we get on the clock, depending on what player is there, then I'll make the decision whether we go with a trade or not go with a trade. I'll ask them, for example, what, what do we got right now and what are our two best options? And then I just you know make the decision from there. We usually call the player once we make that decision we usually will call the player, let him know we're going to draft him. I want to talk to the player on the phone before we turn a card in to make sure, one, that he's living uh, and ask him if he's healthy and had any injuries. But we never draft the player unless we talk to him first on the phone. Okay. Well, once you moved to round two, you selected a middle linebacker who many think uh, had first-round talent, and that was Eric Kendricks out of UCLA. Uh, what were the key things you saw in him to make you believe he was the answer in the middle for the Vikings maybe long-term? Well, you know, we thought he was the most instinctive linebacker in the draft. Uh, he has great range from sideline to sideline. Well, he's not small, but he's not overly big, but he has a unique ability to get underneath the offensive lineman's pads uh, to, to separate and locate the ball. The other thing is that he is very good in pass coverage. Uh, you can do multiple things with him, you know, in our pass coverage scheme. And we really noticed him, and I did notice him as long as in our scouts is last year when we were scouting Anthony Barr, and uh, then this number six kept popping up on the tape, and who in the heck is that? And we looked, oh, yeah, he's a junior linebacker that will be coming out next year. And he's, uh, his brother's playing for Philadelphia right now. Mm -hmm. So that was another situation in the second round uh, where we did, you know, receive some calls about teams trying to trade up into that spot. But that player and the same thing with Trey Wayne, those were two players that I didn't think were worth trading out of just because I, how we feel about them potentially coming in and help our defense. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned his size. He's about six foot two thirty-five, from what I've seen. And you know, that's not prototypical middle linebacker size. But I'm wondering, is the expectation for him to get heavier to handle a sixteen-game NFL schedule, or is his quickness more the key in Mike Zimmer's defense? You know, I think it's the quickness and the athletic traits. But he does play strong for his size. Uh, sometimes, when you're a six-six-one linebacker, you have some natural leverage built into you. And I think, you know, all these young guys, as they come in, they'll be coming in this weekend for our rookie mini camp, And uh, that'll be the evaluation process. We'll see how, how far they're along or how far they have to come. And then that process will go through this off season and into training camp. And, you know, the coaches will determine when these guys are ready to play. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because as you went along the draft, you have to drafted uh, three offensive tackles, and T.J. Clemmings is widely reported, again, as one of those first-round talents. If it hadn't been for a foot stress fracture, it was discovered before the draft. Now, the fans, what they're wondering about is if any of these players who are tackles right now might be tried at left guard, and they also want to know how second-year man David Yankee is progressing, and will he be in the mix for the left guard positional need? Yeah, that position is wide open. You know, the one key that we wanted to sign uh, in the offseason was getting Joe Berger back um, because he played well for us last year. Uh, he's a veteran that has lined up. I can tell you, David Yankee, coming back this offseason, you can tell how hard he worked before we reported back here. So we're very excited about where he's at. But, the, you know, the idea to have the best 53 is to create as much competition as you can. Yeah. So as we drafted all these offensive linemen in the third day, and some people said, well, why didn't you take some maybe on Thursday or Friday, is as you saw the board unfold, and every year it's different, there was so much depth down there during that third day uh, in the offensive line. And when we took T.J. Cummings, 
you know, the, the foot fracture, that was discovered at the combine. But when we went back and we talked to our medical people, uh, he never missed a day of practice at Pitt, never missed a game, never missed a practice at Senior Bowl, never missed the Senior Bowl game, did, did worked out at the combine and did everything at his pro day. So I asked her, when, when did he do this? And I don't think there's a definitive answer. If he did it in high school and has been playing with it all along, uh, was it new? And we didn't think it was new. So whatever that was, he's been playing with it, and somehow it has not affected his play. You know, you went heavy early on, on defensive side. Then you kind of had some draft picks on the offensive side, including Michael Pruitt. And also the one that the fans are really kind of excited about is Marilyn wideout Stefan Diggs. So a little bit different. What's he bring to this offense with his skill set? You know, he is, uh, he is a very explosive athlete with the ball in his hands. He does have some return potential as well. I know he was a five-star <clears throat> recruit coming out of high school. I actually saw him play his freshman year when I was at a game at Virginia, and he went up and down the field. And you thought this guy was, boy, he's going to be something special. Then he got nagged with some injuries and probably uh, didn't have the career that he wanted to have in college. But I think this kid, when you talk to him, he has a real chip on his shoulder, and he does have some unique ball skills uh, with, you know, once he gets the ball in his hand. And I think I saw a stat somewhere that uh, he led all receivers at the Division One level with run after catch skills and the amount of yards he can get after he gets the ball in his hand. Yeah, that's great. That's what people are looking for. They saw the highlight package and they saw him run the quick slant, sitting on the slot position. So now all of a sudden your wide receiver position with the addition of Mike Wallace and all the other talent that you have there really becomes a strength of your team. Yeah, we're, we wanted to try to get as many uh, weapons around Teddy as we could. We you know we got... You know, we're able to add Mike Wallace, who's going to definitely give us a vertical threat uh, down the field. And then with addition, with all our, our you know, with the Jarius Wrights and, and Cordell Patterson, I can't tell you how impressed we've been with his offseason work habits and, and the approach he's brought into this camp so far. And Charles Johnson, who we picked up off of Cleveland's practice squad last year by the second ball game, and how he developed, and he wasn't even here through all of training camp last year. So as we feel we have a very young nucleus uh, of playmakers at that receiver position. They're all going to grow with our young quarterback and the addition of Stephon Diggs. Uh, we're very excited to see uh, where this group goes together. You know, and after the draft the concludes, there's always some, some interesting prospects that don't get drafted, but teams pick them up. And you've signed several undrafted free agents since the draft concluded. And I wondered, Rick, you were a free agent linebacker coming out of Southern Illinois in 1987. I was, and I was a very, very free agent linebacker. <laughs> so, in other words, you were always available to take the call. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but in, no, I was there. Yeah, call me, please. <laughs> yeah, well, I know, that, and again, you attended training camp with both the Chargers and the Lions, and, and I'm curious, for a guy who's been through that, you know, from your own experience as a free agent, how hard is it to capture the attention of the coaches and make a squad when you're a free agent? Uh, it was a little different back then because there was about 140 guys that they invited to training camp. There was no limit, so... When I was going through every day, you walk through the breakfast line, you'd see the guy in front of you get yanked out or, or back. So it's a little different now because of the uh, maximum of having 90 players on your roster. And most of these college free agents that you're bringing in, you're going to take the, you know, the training camp. And, and a lot of these guys will, be, you know, if they don't make your 53 man roster, hopefully will uh, be potential practice squad players for you. And so it's a little different nowadays than it was back then. But, uh, if it, you know, they uh, drafted my brother in the second round after they signed me. So, <laughs> But it was that, uh, I had a little bit of an uphill battle because he was a little bit better athlete than I was. Yeah, and he played for quite a while. And, then, you, know, you know, Rick, we're the same age. But, you know, what struck me when I met you last year at training camp was how different your physique looks than mine. So i got to ask you, what do you do to stay in such good shape? Or is it merely all those years of chasing your six adopted children around that keeps you on your toes? You know, the, the, everybody has different ways of, and this can be a stressful job at times. And the one outlet that I do have is I love to, to work out. It seems to be my – everybody finds different ways to relieve stress. So, you know, every morning I'm out doing something before I come to work, and I usually do something before I go home. So that, I just use it as a uh, kind of a stress relief. 
Well, I know you know you made that attempt in the NFL, and it, it, it fell just a bit short. And I know George Bland had played in the NFL until he was 48. So I want to know, in a pinch, can you cover a tight end of the nickel defense? And if so, are your contract demands reasonable if the team needs to add you to the roster? Oh, I always carry a contract in my briefcase wherever we go, just in case I need to sign me. <laughs> <laughs> but so far, nobody's given you a pen, right? Oh, no one's given, I haven't given myself a chance yet. And then uh, I had a hip replacement two years ago, so I put myself on a shelf after that. I hear you. Well, Rick, listen, I want to thank you again for joining us uh, today to talk about some of the draft choice in the process. And we encourage our listeners and fans to visit vikings.com often to hear <laughs> all the up-to-date news on your Minnesota Vikings. And again, Rick, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it was fun. Thanks for having me on. You bet.